There's no tongue, no tongue. All right, so all right, so we've we've kind of gone off a little bit because I'm trying to stay current, and this is a movie that I um, I, I really want to see. It's a break from all the same stuff that we see in Hollywood. It's kind of a historical, fictional, uh, what do you call it, mode together like Titanic. Remember Titanic? It was like, which is yeah. fictional and, you know, the Titanic actually really sunk. So, uh, you know, they molded it together and created Titanic. And uh, so it's kind of like what this is, is kind of so it's a little bit more hardcore because it's Quentin Tarantino. So, you know, there's probably, you know, a few N words, a few <laughs> guns. A lot shot. of bashing someone's face in. Yeah. That was, that was my favorite part. <laughs> exactly. So, some great, great, great stuff. And uh, now, as far as this genre, are y'all familiar with this type of genre before? Or is this something you've delved into? I kind of am. I've seen a couple of movies. Yeah. Um, that were like this. I don't remember any of the names to them, of course, but... I'm going to be honest. I went in not knowing what the movie was about, and I went out not knowing what the movie was about. <laughs> it kind of just ends, and you're like, what happened? It was good, and it was entertaining, but I'm yeah. still not quite... Like, there's a lot of topics we right. can talk about. There's a big oh, movie yeah. with a lot to discuss, but... Yeah. I, I And it's something, like I said... Everything. Yeah, and being, you know, more like me, because... I, I mean, I really love filmmaking, and I love uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, history of it. And you know, this gives you a little bit of glimpse behind there, and uh, of when Hollywood was kind of like really going down to a new level, which we call the countercultural movement. Uh, I, I always uh, point to the Night of the Living Dead because it came out the same time that this movie uh, goes around, takes place. You know, the big event in the movie. Uh, Night of the Living Day, and, and that really started kind of a counterculture and Hollywood uh, movement. And so, you know, this was really interesting to me because after, you know, it's like Quentin Tarantino, who's a fan of cinema, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, this is kind of what brought me into uh, cinema in the first place. And it, you people are watching at home, uh, we are talking about the movie. Once upon a time in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. So who would like to do a whole review and not say what we're talking about? That right. sounds good. Okay. Who would like to start off with the um I would like to start off with a question. Are sure. we keeping this PG? Because there were a lot of non PG moments in the movie. The movie was not PG. No. Well, I, I mean, I mean, what we've got to do is anytime there's a spoiler, there's a spoiler alert, and that's what editing is for. And you know, like this is uh, I, 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 this is going to be broadcast as a premiere at nine o'clock Monday night. So you stay tuned, and uh, that's part of it because uh, you know as quickly as possible. Because as soon as the news get out, we want to attack it so we can get out there and get the views. So and exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, like this, this was kind of a film I was like, huh, this is one I kind of really want to want to see, you know. You know, where's the, uh, you know, some of them are just not my forte or my taste. But this is in that Quentin Tarantino van. The vein, not the van. Um, so Did you not have a chance to go see it yet? Well, you know, I was planning to, uh, you know, I, I went ahead and uh, it's caught up on another uh, review we did, which was Shazam. I watched it last night. and get That the, was a good one. I yeah. really enjoyed when we watched Shazam. Yeah, yeah I had some it was a good one. Fran issues. But Go back yeah. and see our Shazam videos. But yeah. That was the one that didn't get recorded because we only got the oh. uh, Comic-Con. <laughs> so we may talk a little bit about Shazam as well. <laughs> Don't go look at our Shazam video because it doesn't exist. It's exactly. Yeah. And it's it's a lost find. There's somebody probably on the internet so I know I can find it. It's the way around there. It's like you know, it's like the mic that's that was a good one too. It yeah. Worked. The mic stealing that went around the world, you know, that uh, was on our channel. Um for that. I'm trying to think of uh, do we have some things or videos because we've done videos for eight years now. Is there anything that you can think of that people will remember some of our videos that we've done <laughs> that will I, um, stick out. I don't have a lot of people come and talk to me about the young years in my yeah. career as 
anime voice, kiddo. <laughs> but I had someone uh, who was just recently talking to me about my dance cover videos, which I know are the tr are trash because I couldn't dance. I just, I know all the other girls in our group were doing it and we're doing real good at it. And I was like, I want to try these things. <laughs> and I tried it. Well, and it's like with me, I, I never thought I'd get in the whole cosplay photography because, you know, I was busy making videos and I had mm -hmm. seen what that world was and then they dragged me into it. <laughs> and here I am. Well, and you know, and the worst thing, I never thought I would regret getting into the whole J-pop community uh, in my life. I didn't think I would regret it, you know, or have a change, but now I'm kind of like... I'm glad I'm out of it <laughs> because, you know, of everything. And now I get is uh, weird uh, comments about, I can't believe that he thinks this and this. No, I said this is what somebody has said about this. I'm just reiterating the message to you. And it's like, I'm not going to take any sides on this. I'm just like, you know, I've moved on. I've burned my bridge. Yeah, I've burned my bridge. I'm done with that life and you know uh you know I see now that I wish I never got y'all involved in it really I'll be honest with you because yeah I mean uh I I I mean here's if Japan went and said I want you to be as a dance recruiter cuz it was back at an Australian group who tried to get me as a dance recruiter for like one of these groups and I was like yeah sure but if they did that again I said here's what I want here's my stipulation all the girls have to be over 18. Uh, there has to be some guys in it, and there better be people of color as well, as well, because those are be my like three stipulations. There be there have to be at least one guy in the group, at least one, at the most. I mean, if you can't, if you get three or four, I'm fine with it. But there has to be guys in the group. There has to be all of them have to be over 18, and there has to be people of color as well. That would be my three stipulations. Oh, darn, I'm 12. We had exactly. a group called the Cupcake Girls. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Yeah. But those were my those would be my stipulations right there. And then they would be able to get me. But other than that, I'm not going to do 14, 16-year-old all-white girls ever again. <laughs> no, never. That is not going to happen ever. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. I mean, uh, I, I hate saying that, never say never, but no, there's just too much stuff involved in that. All right, so let's get back to our topic. We've totally flown off our topic there. All right, so let's... We yes, we do that. You're like, no, I'm trying to waste a little time so I don't have to talk about it. Okay, because let's see. Uh, let's roll a little dice here. Who's going to focus? Uh, let's go with Alex. <laughs> um... So let's start with the beginning of the movie. Right. Let's see. Where did it start off? Okay, because... okay. Well, before we start about the beginning of the movie, let's 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 list off our, our three wonderful stars of, of right. the movie. There's Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt and Margot and then, Robbie. Yep. So we had a good cast, a really strong cast in this movie. And I just can I just say that I always appreciate whenever they put Margot Robbie and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in a movie together. I like that. <laughs> this, this makes Lucas a very happy boy. So Leonardo DiCaprio's character was a lot different than I would have expected him to ever play. Mm -hmm. He was playing a guy with a country accent. He um, was basically an actor who did Western movies and yeah. was like a cowboy kind of actor. Uh, his character's name was Rick Dalton. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was an actor that he played in movies, and he was starred in a show called um, Bounty Law. Bounty Law, and he started to find troubles in acting because he was getting older and was playing the. Uh, the heavy or the villain in a lot of shows and getting essentially killed off. So he was just all this trouble in life and wondering what he was going to do. So 
That was him, and then... More about being a washed-up actor. Yeah. Basically. And then there was Brad Pitt's character, who was... I don't remember his name. Cliff... Cliff something. Cliff... Cliff, I don't, I don't remember. But I liked him. He was yeah. really good. He was probably my favorite character. Really? Yeah, I liked Brad Pitt's yeah, character. I, honestly, I think he was my favorite, too. But he was really cool. He played, like, the... Uh, Stunt... Stuff. Yeah, he always played as, for years in his career, he was always Leonardo DiCaprio's stunt double. So his quality of living was like a step down, but they were still best friends and did literally everything together. Uh, he drove... Kind of like us. Yeah, he drove Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio around and brought him to like shows and auditions and just different things like that. And they were always just, you know, always together being friends. Alex, did you carry really Lucas's load? Alex, did you carry Lucas load a lot? Is that <laughs> yeah? Bad cord. I got a bad cord. Okay, so you carried Alex's uh, Lucas's load a lot, Alex. Then okay, so yeah, and uh, I can see where they're going with Ricky Dalton. Ricky Dalton is loosely, obviously, based upon uh, Steve McQueen, and he had a I'm show called. This. Hold on. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, I'm I'm trying to look up Steve McQueen, but I put Steam. S T E M E, not Steam even S T E E M or S T E. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, definitely yeah. the kind of thing. He even wore some of like this familiar kind of stuff. I I just googled who. I'm a young person. I didn't know who Steve McQueen was. I'm sorry. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. And Steve McQueen uh, had a show called The Bounty Hunter. And. Uh, Back to Google. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, so, I like this photo. Uh, I'm gonna send you a picture of this photo so you can put this up for the review. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. This is the guy that Lee is talking about. Yeah. <laughs> there was a part when um, Rick Dalton said, "I don't know if I'm gonna have to go back to Missouri," and we're just like, "I know." We uh, looked at each other. We're like, Missouri. <laughs> You don't know any of them people in, in Missouri. Awesome. Well, Who would and, live and, there? Yeah. Who would live in... <laughs> Not anybody I know. Hey, it's worse living in western Kentucky. Or, We're actually uh, in Italy right now. <laughs> I wish, man. Or, or eastern Tennessee. Yeah, Italy would be nice. You, you know what my dream place is? Is Spain. Ooh. Is where Roger Moore, yeah, Roger Moore and Sean Connery retired. And you know it's too expensive for regular people because, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's like, and I need, and I could go into detail other reasons why I want to go there, but, um, well, I I, I I I always tell this story and I tell this story at work. I don't know if I told it to you guys. It's about the the Japanese promoter that uh, you know that got me into the j-pop community he was trying to uh you know get a group together right and when he he, he just wasn't satisfied with the three he had and he kept on recruiting 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 he went down to spain and we never heard from him again done done yeah. <laughs> No, yes, we did. We did hear from him, but he was still recruiting a girl for a very, 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 very long time. As far as I know about it, after eight years later, he's still recruiting her. So, anyways. <laughs> would, would that be complete talking? Spain! Spain! <laughs> All right, let's... Look. Let's let's get back on the subject here. So we we because we got a lot to talk about. So we we've got this Steve McQueen based character. We have a stunt double played by Brad Pitt, fifty five years of age, looking good for fifty five. Oh, he he really uh, was. Yeah, he was really built, and uh, they did a good job on the physical aspect of him. And he's, still, he's looking he's a lot like, better than uh, Tom Cruise was. At exactly. Even even after this uh, digital uh, uh, blob stuff they put on Tom Cruise, he still looks better than Tom Cruise digitally blobbed. Yes. You do guys understand about the digital makeup, right? Yes. Yeah, that you put the green glue glop on you, and then they make you look younger and all that. I so had no idea. Uh, yeah, I know I did. Yeah, 
You just like get in the blop, and they put it. You know, they put it on. Okay. And then it's like, okay, now we digitally enhance him. Now you're 20 years younger, Tom Cruise. I wish this would work when I go to bed with my wife. No, that's okay. Let's fix that voice too. Let me go. Like, Hi, I'm Tom Cruise. Okay. So, anyways, let's go back to what were we talking about? We were talking about 55 year old yeah. Brad Pitt. And he is the stuntman. Brad, 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 55 year old Brad Pitt. with Pick underage up. hippie chicks. There was yeah. a girl that he ended up, his character ended up picking up that was easily like 17. And she kind of, she said something. He was like, she was like, I'm going to seduce you. And he's like, ID, please. And she was like, What? <laughs> And he was like, ID, please. You don't, you can't because you are a child. And she's like, shh. <laughs> nah. Mad no face. way. Yeah. I'm totally over here. Yeah, she's like, I'm 18. And he's like, me too. Can I see your ID? <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously too old for you. But all these, uh, so there was like this. A uh, group of like I think I counted like fifteen in that intense scene. You counted? Yeah, I did. There was like there were too fifteen many to count of for them. Me. Fifteen hippie people that were like living on a deserted set of one of the old western movies that they used to uh, shoot, like a like an old that's when, western that's when looking town. Law. Whenever they were shooting Bounty Law, so it was a movie set owned by an old director who is now blind and now he's letting like 15 hippies just live there yeah, and live do whatever on. they want with the property. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I didn't really understand that part, but I mean, it was the sixties. So yeah, whatever. There weren't really many. Yes. We were not, we weren't anywhere. Asking. We weren't even a thought back in yeah, the sixties. No. So I'm sure people oh, were thinking of you and fifties. Cause the, um, Bounty Law was shot in the 50s. Yeah. So. My parents were born in the late 60s. Yeah. Your parents were born in the late 60s? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know what the 60s was. I have a brother who was born in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild because, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine that he lived in there during that time, you know, when this was all going on. All right, so he's um, now. So is um, we're getting to the point where we're getting to this uh, commune that is going on, and communes were very, very um, common in the day. And in fact, the commons communes really stayed popular up to the eighties. Uh, a good example is someone who came from a commune uh, during the eighties. Uh, later on, was uh, Steve Jobs, and he grew up on commune. And a lot of times you would see goats and, uh, you know, and kids and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, it was just a place, you know, they all grew their weed and grass and corn together and all that crap. So, all right, so he, he's getting a commune going on. So from there, and we're on this uh, set. And like I said, uh, we're getting into this cult-like uh, uh, system, right? It was definitely very cultish. Yeah. So where do we go from there now? Well, uh, <laughs> one of them decided to pop his tire. And then he proceeded to, to put say, his face inside of his body. Yes. <laughs> um, he made the guy that popped the tire fix it after. Did he punch him in, him the, in face, the face like three times? Like, oh, it was like, like four. Decked him in the face in front of all of his friends basically so 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 basically this one guy popped his tire and is sitting there laughing about it and he's like this is my boss's car or tom cruise is like this is my boss's car you're gonna fix it tom cruise Brad tom cruise what did I say? Brad said tom. <laughs> tom cruise was in this movie guys. yes he had jelly <laughs> so he yeah, could look like uh, brad pitt oh well but yeah and then he was like i'm gonna punch your face in a few times in front of your friends and then they tried to help him, and he said, come one step closer, and I'll hit him again. Yeah. And then they stopped. And then he proceeded to hit him again anyway. Yeah. I like <laughs> and then he made him fix the tire. So. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty great. 
<laughs> that guy's face was messed up. I'm not gonna necessarily spoil it because it's literally at the end of the movie, but there is a flamethrower. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. there, there's a scene with it. There's yeah. a scene at the very end that's very flamethrower esque. Yeah, that's, that's very flamethrower esque. But they introduced the flamethrower at uh, the, like pretty much at the beginning. Yeah, it's um, Leonardo DiCaprio right. is one of his. his of Movie stories or anything. Oh, you actually caught that? Yeah, it was just a movie that Leonardo DiCaprio was in at one point, and he ended up getting to keep the flamethrower that he used in the movie. Correction, it was Rick Dalton. What did I say? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. Well, it's a... Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Yeah. Really Mom, Dad, good. don't fight. It's just a yeah. movie. All right, so... All right, so, wow. so Rick. Yeah, the thing I liked about this movie <laughs> is that it went into a lot of like flashbacks of all of the movies that Leon, uh, that Rick Dalton, that Rick Dalton was in, like a bunch of different westerns and the one with the flamethrower, and it was, yeah, it was a lot of um, sensitive material in this yes. movie, I would say, because he used the flamethrower on a group of Nazis. Yeah. Which was pretty entertaining, but it was like, wow. And you said things that I don't know if I can say on YouTube. So. Probably not. So we're just going to Well, it's up. it's like I said, we, we 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 do the editing, so it's it's just part of it. I mean, it's like like I said, it's a Quentin Tarantino. You're going to hear the F word. You're going to hear the N word. You're going to hear the GD Actually, word. Actually, I don't think you heard the N word at all in this movie. I don't think Oh, it really? Was that's kind of There yeah, were no people of color in the movie. Yeah. Which is kind of weird for him. In the background, but that's about it. There were no like main characters that were of color, unfortunately. No. Yeah. But, but maybe yeah. it was because of the time that it was set in. Yeah, that's also true. And in that part of Hollywood, maybe there weren't a lot of people of color who were yeah. really up and coming at that point. <laughs> well, I was kind of it was kind of uh, surprising of that. Now they have the Bruce Lee in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he got his, he got his butt kicked. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, and as far as with all the CGI that they did to make him so realistic, did you feel that was very realistic, the Bruce Lee character? I think they put him... It was him, a satire of Bruce Lee. I feel like the, at least the main, the biggest scene that he was in, I feel like was put in for comedic purposes. Yeah. Because he was, was doing really like a release. war cry the whole time. Like, the, whoa, 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 whoa. It was really funny, but yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, if you if you really technically, because I listened to the guy talking, and I was like, my goodness, he does sound like Bruce Lee. If you go to the old interviews of Bruce Lee, yeah. and uh, he kind of does. I mean, I we can pull some of those up. Okay, so I, don't know. I watched a lot of Bruce Lee when I was younger, and I didn't get the. Well, you didn't watch all the interviews though. That he that's did. also true. I did not. Because, so I did not uh, be he, aware, be yeah, of the right. connection. Right. Because he he was dubbed in all his films except for one. So he was you dubbed? have to th- like dubbed over. Yeah. Yes, except for one, he was dubbed in all his films because people didn't feel like they would be able to understand him, and and really? like I was, yes, and so That's kind the, of racist. Yeah. Well, it is uh. in some uh, uh, ways. It is. Uh, in other ways, you know, you got to understand, too, it's like you guys ever get a phone call from a debt collector who can't barely speak English? My mom she's like, hi, my Karen. name is Amir from India. How may I misunderstand you today? Exactly. And, and, and you get that. And it's so strange because we talk about this because, like, um, you know, we're doing, I do a lot of, uh, you know, getting into the outsourcing with the Philippines. And I was, I'm very blessed to be able to uh outsource you know because you know with these movie reviews we'll be outsourcing out to the philippines and and i don't know what it is why their english is so much uh better even though india you know they're doing really well as a country but it's just they just have a hard time getting the english and you know my friend is you know like so my friend is chinese right and he outsources out in taiwan and hong kong and he complains about the indian people all the time it's like i can't understand them and i'm like 
<laughs> and and of course my friend's got real th- thick Chinese accent, so it's like uh, he'll go in there and he'll say Riri, and he'll say uh, what's another thing? Every L is R, you know, and I crack up every once in a while about that. But but he he's like with me, it's like you know with outsourcing, it's it is tough to uh, do that translation. I felt with him nowadays, it's more common in California, is because that's where you get your your Chinese population came over to california and so now it's just regular you know it's like that's the reason why because you got people with thicker accents but here in the 60s it was a little bit harder you know it's like <laughs> to understand a lot of that yeah, all right so so bruce lee you guys uh wanted some of you guys kind of didn't buy that you didn't think it was as realistic as the uh, as him being real life or i i didn't think much of it Mm-hmm. I honestly didn't recognize it as Bruce Lee until about halfway through the scene with Brad Pitt kicking his butt. I also didn't <laughs> realize it was supposed to be Bruce Lee. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I didn't as well. Realize. Well, the, only, the the connection, of course, is that Bruce Lee's manager uh, died with Sharon Tate. And that's the reason why I always thought that was the reason they would put him in there because the manager, Bruce Lee, died with Sharon Tate. In the Manson family murders, and, and of course, are we getting into that yet? Or they're, that's they're... like the end, but yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Okay, pretty much slowly, sco- slowly grudging yeah, into we're, there. We're snowballing in, snowballing. Snowball. In. <laughs> there was a lot of um, almost every scene, someone was rolling a joint. Yeah, <laughs> there were uh, two sets of characters. That uh, the movie follows uh, each of these groups of actors or characters, and they don't meet until the very end. And it's only Rick Dalton that meets them when one of them comes to the gate because they hear stuff happening, and um, they're like, "Oh, hey, you're Rick Dalton from Bounty Law." And then they're like, "Hey, you want to come in for a drink?" And he says, "Yeah." And then that's the end of the movie. So it's yeah, we were I find that kind of weird. So what what did you find weird about? That they, they they were neighbors the whole time and they didn't talk to each other like who's your daddy? 